Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to episode 106 of the Knife Guy. Uh, if you are new to my channel or just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are, who I am, I'm a knife guy. Knife user, knife collector, knife enjoyer of many sorts. We are all, I'm assuming, uh, if you're watching this video, knife guys, knife gals in this super weird knife and EDC related world. And we all go down our own unique paths, but oftentimes those paths intersect and we experience a lot of the same stuff. Generally, uh, this series um, consists of me picking up knives that are either mine or some of my generous viewers and flipping them, showing them off a little bit, just kind of fidgeting with them while I talk about these shared experiences. What are we talking about today? First off, just so you guys know, there'll be a link down in the description for DLT trading. The whole back sumo's back. Um, and uh, I it was a I, I unboxed this and, and uh, talked about it. This was sent to me by uh, Jay Kobach directly. Um, but they've got three colors. There's like an all stone washed with like blue accents, and there's this black and purple one, and then they've got like a sort of I don't know, like a darker concrete one with gold. Those are available right now at DLT, and it just, seriously, this was a coincidence. I uploaded the video like, hey, cool, look what's coming, and it it was literally that day that they went up on DLT. So I'm recording this on a Thursday. I'm assuming they're still there, because they the last time I checked, they were all still there. If you've been waiting to get a Sumo and you didn't know, those are at DLT at the time of this upload, I think. So feel free to check the description down there. Anyways, uh, so what's the deal with the short videos? If you guys have been, you know, for those of you who watch my channel religiously, first of all, thank you. That's really nice. Um, I upload a lot of content. I know that there are quite a few of you who watch every single day. So thank you. What's the deal with the short videos? So for a long time, and I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what YouTube shorts are, right? A lot of you guys are aware of TikTok. I'm not, I don't have, I don't have TikTok. I don't mess around with it. Um, and I saw the option to utilize YouTube shorts on my phone. And I was like, what is this? Never understood it. It slowly, I kind of figured out, I was like, okay, this, this is YouTube's version of TikTok. All right, so whatever. I ignored it for a long time. Um, and then I talked to some other people in the community. Uh, actually, Little Fit Devil was really cool about this. She kind of explained what it is, how to use, utilize it, how it can be beneficial. And I was like, that's actually kind of interesting. So it's just short. It's like super short videos. They get categorized a certain way on YouTube. So why would I be interested in that? I'm interested in doing two different types of content, very specifically. I like to do long, mostly unedited, drawn out videos where I talk in depth about every last little teeny tiny detail that goes into a folding knife. And that's what the vast majority of my current subscribers are here to watch, right? If you're new to the channel, and you're like, who would sit and listen to a 20 minute video about knives? Apparently 53,000 people. <laughs> I'm not trying to flex, it's just like, that's what happened, right? So that's cool. That's the type of content I like to make, right? So that's why I put it up there. I've never really been interested in the um, mega, like long production, right? Where it's, there's like a lot of editing and a lot of, um, a lot of work that goes into it to like sync everything up and make it humorous and make it, I don't know. There's a lot of it. And here's the reason why one video going, doing that, right? I mean, I've talked with, um, advanced knife bro and Cedric Canada or Pete from Cedric Canada, uh, for them to do one upload like that, it takes them, it's like eight hours of work. Uh, so that cannot happen. It literally can't happen. If I were to do that with this channel, you guys would get three uploads a week maximum. That would be me working at maximum effort to do that. And I don't think that's, why people are here. You guys are here for my type of content, right? But I do love the idea of editing some a very small clip, just something silly, right? Sometimes it's gonna be stupid, sometimes it's gonna be silly, sometimes it's just gonna be like, ooh, neat, right? Whatever, it's 15 seconds. So in that situation, you know, for me, from my end, it's like, so I do, like I come up with an idea for a 15 uh, second video, well, YouTube Shorts is sp supposed to be 60 seconds or less, and like, but it defaults to 15 seconds if you use the thing on the phone. If you've ever tried it, you know what I'm talking about, right? So for me, I was like 15 seconds to a minute, right? And that's easy. And then it's the editing and making it kind of fun that would take a little bit more time. Uh, I did two of these. 
The first one I did was nothing. It took maybe 30 minutes total to put it together. The second one was a little bit more complicated. Uh, it took a couple of hours, but that's because I didn't quite understand how to... I, I messed around with editing and putting it together. You guys don't really care about this. Um, but I thought to myself, that's an interesting way to interact with a different section of YouTube that has no idea that I exist. And of course, as a content creator, I'm interested in people from all corners of not just YouTube, but the internet in general, coming and checking out my channel and the knife world in general, right? So I thought, how much effort would that take on top of what I already do? Not much. So if you're wondering what's the deal with that, why is he you know, doing these? Is it gonna affect his content flow? Is he changing the way that it, no, not at all. It's literally just gonna be on top of what I normally do. I haven't figured out exactly when I'm gonna do it or how often. Probably once a week, I will upload some random short video and it'll probably pop up as a regular video to you guys. But the idea is, is you know, these are fun. It's something that's fun for me to do. It's a way for me to show off something fun or interesting, right? Uh, and uh, best case scenario, it attracts new people to the channel, right? Worst case scenario, people don't like it. Oh, well, they lost 15 seconds of their day, right? So I figured, yeah, that's something that I could do, right? That's, you know, potentially maximum benefit and very low negative impact on the channel. So if you're wondering, yeah. Uh, that's something that I'm going to do periodically, probably just once a week. Um, I've always uh, I've always enjoyed uh, short, little, stupid clips. I've enjoyed. I think like people who are just on the internet kind of enjoy that thing. And uh, something that is just not present, something that I never see, other than YouTube stories and Instagram stories and little things on Instagram. It's just not something I see, especially on YouTube, right? So yeah, I mean like. You know, let's say I invest a couple of months into this with the channel. Once a week, 15 seconds, takes an hour to edit it completely and get it up. Yeah, it just, it's, you know, it just seems like something that I would enjoy doing. I mean, that's the main, the main thing here for me is to be able to create content that you guys enjoy and that I enjoy making at the same time. I think it would be interesting to create a big, long, you know, 10 to 15 minute video that's heavily edited, right? If you don't know, a 10 to 15 minute video that's heavily edited, it's like what I was saying earlier, like what Cedric and Ada do, or well, I'm sorry, what what uh, Pete does from Cedric and Ada and what uh, uh, Advanced Knife Bro does. Yeah, that's you're, you're looking at eight hours of work. It sounds crazy, but that's how much work goes into it. The amount of fun and enjoyment that I would get out of it would not equivalent to how much work went into it. And while there are probably some people on this channel who would like to see something like that from me, it's not going to be overall, right? I have to guess the vast majority of you, again, the reason that you're here is to watch the type of content that I've been, been putting out over the last three years. That's what I'm always going to do. Um, but I think, uh, you know, not diversifying. This is, I, apparently this is like a, a YouTube video, right? Not diversifying would be stupid. As a content creator, not diversifying at all and doing, not doing any other types of content would be silly right? Now, in the future, you know, yeah, will I periodically dabble in, you know, flashlights and stuff? Maybe, but I'm not an expert. Go, go back and look at the videos I've done on flashlights and look at the comment section. There's people who are flashlight experts. It doesn't matter what it's titled as. Like I titled one as unboxing, right? And first impressions. And then I was like, in the video, I literally said, I'm not a flashlight expert. I'm just kind of opening this up and looking at it. And there are a ton of comments that are like, this is a terrible video. There's no accurate information. And I was, I, I was like, what? I didn't, I didn't say that it was going to be. <laughs> so I, I like to diversify a little bit, but there's a risk involved, right? You get a lot, if you get a lot of like negative energy from people who don't, or aren't familiar with the channel, aren't familiar with the way that I do things, right? Then they're going to be confused. They're going to be angry and feel like somebody wasted their time. Um, so that's the type of diversification that I am interested in. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, why don't you do uh, like watches? Why don't you do review pens or why don't you do this type? Why don't you do this type of cut? Why don't you do these cut tests or this or that? It's because my audience isn't really interested. I've kind of messed around here or there, just kind of poked at it, prodded at it. And I found that the people who click on the notifications for my video, while there are a few people, the vast majority of you really, really love unboxings. Holy cow, you guys love unboxings. And then a lot of you really like the reviews as well, right? So that's the bread and butter. And that works out because that's what I like to do. 
there is no reason to force anything that I don't enjoy. So uh, I'll probably, I'll pick a day. Um, it's probably uh, moving forward going to be Tuesday or Wednesday for short videos, but they will be random. They'll be fun and they will definitely be knife related. There's no way to jam in any uh, critical, useful information into a 15 second to 60 second video. It's literally just meant to be fun. Um, but like I said, it'll appear for you guys as a regular video, but the way that YouTube indexes it, if you guys don't know, there's a section in YouTube that's just shorts, hashtag shorts. That's why it says it in the title, right? Where people can go in and just randomly watch. It's a lot, apparently, I've actually never downloaded the TikTok app. It's a lot like TikTok where people with a very short attention span will go through, people like me, because I definitely do like stuff like that, will go through and just click and watch random videos, right? Most of them are incredibly unentertaining, but eventually you find something that's kind of funny, right? Or kind of stupid or kind of interesting, right? For just that short period of time. I find that interesting and like it or not, that's the direction the internet's been heading for a long time, like different social media platforms, right? I mean, like, People love memes and short little stupid things. Anybody who's ever seen it, one of my favorite short videos of all time, that video where <laughs> it's an imitation of the of Sid from Ice Age, and that girl's like, a dandelion must be the last one of the season. <laughs> and she takes it back. <laughs> I laugh so hard at that. If you've seen that video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That was so funny. That just cracked me up, right? Little things like that. I have a short, it seems like I'd be the type of person who would have a lengthy attention span, right? But if you watch my videos and you listen to how often I change subjects, how quickly I jump from one thing to, an, to another, ironically, it my short attention span actually translates really well into this type of content. That's part of the reason that I'm able to do videos easily without ever to organically do videos that last 15 to 25 minutes, in some cases 40 minutes without any editing. Because I'm my attention span is so short that I can't stay on one topic longer than about 30 seconds to a minute before I have to move on to another element, another part of the knife, another, you know, section of commentary on, on one thing or another. Also, that's the reason for the pace. Uh, I like to focus on lots of different things at once, right? You know, I mean, I'm sure there's people that that's, yeah, there's probably something wrong with your brain. Mental complex. <laughs> Just made a funny joke. Yeah, I titled the channel that way on purpose, you goof. <laughs> it's, there's an old video of me saying that in the early days. There's de absolutely the way that my brain works with this stuff and a lot of stuff. Yeah, I have a short attention span. I jump from one thing to another. So that was, it was kind of a play on words, right? Metal and then the complexities of the things that we, you know, enjoy. And then the whole, like, it's kind of not to poke fun at actual mental issues. Not at all, right? It's more of a, hey, this guy's kind of crazy. He's a super knife nut and he's really scatterbrained and all over the place, right? It was basically me doing what I usually do and making the joke before anybody else could, but that went over the heads of some, <laughs> whatever the heads of some people. So yeah, um, it's just kind of the entire channel is is me taking my hobby and uh, making sure that it works in a way that is entertaining and um, what's the right word uh, that is um, oh stimulating. Yes, stimulating for me, because if I can't get excited about it, I won't do it. If it's not entertaining for me, I won't do it, right? It's basically, <laughs> with a lot of us, like, right? You're much more inclined to do something if it is, you know, stimulating or exciting or entertaining for you, right? Um, so that's how I've kept up. Uh, and I mean, this hybridized episode, for anybody wondering how... How do you put out two uploads a day? You've been doing this, right? The channel has existed for three years, but I've been consistently uploading content for a year and a half at two videos a day for a year and a half. And people, every day I get this question on Instagram, how do you upload twice a day? It's because that's the way my brain works. I have set it up to where I have a lot of stuff coming in, right? And I've got this schedule and this system where I like to look at lots of little things and compare with lots of little things and jump around and just kind of all of this just syncs up with the way that I want to do things, right? So how do I tie this all in? How do I tie this together 
the way that I usually do at the end of a, a Knife Guy episode, right? Where I just kind of circle back and mash it together, the way that it's relatable to everybody. Everybody's mind works differently. The reason that you're fascinated, if you're watching this video, you're probably fascinated with knives, right? You're also probably thinking, why did I just spend 15 minutes watching a video where a guy lays a bunch of knives out on a table and talks to something that's just loosely, it's more of like a channel update and him rambling about random stuff, right? Just loosely related. Why? I don't, I don't know, but thanks for being here. Um, but uh, the... You're all interested in this stuff for one reason or another. I mean, we all the, the baseline is we all like knives, right? We seek out different things for different reasons. We collect different things. We use different things, right? We focus in on the different elements, right? We zero in on that stuff. Um, but we all like knives. Uh, do the things, you know, go about this the way that it works best for you, right? I mean, your, your brain and your body and everything is going to tell you whether or not the way that you're going about stuff is satisfactory. If it feels cumbersome, cumbersome. If it feels, you know, you're collecting your, like if your knife world experience, I'm not talking about YouTube creators, I'm talking about people who are interested in this stuff in general, or not even knife stuff, just life in general. If it feels like the way that you're going about things, right? Your daily schedule. Number one, definitely my suggestion would be have a schedule, have a routine, have a way that you do things. If it feels like the way that you're doing things currently is maybe it's efficient, but it's not bringing you a good, like if basically the joy, or the happiness should outweigh the work, right? You should be happier than you are tired, right? Everybody's going to get tired. Everybody's going to get worn down in one way, shape or form. But if you gain an amount of happiness or amount of, you know, stimulation that brings you happiness that is beyond the pain, right? Then you're probably on the right path. However, it is that you're doing anything. And that's what you should do and continue to find ways to make that process easier, less stressful, more enjoyable as you move on. Uh, that's just how I view everything. If you're like me, you're constantly looking at what did we do today? What, you know, from getting in the truck and going and picking this person up and going and running this errand, right? How did that work out? How can I make that more efficient, less painful and more enjoyable in the future? And life just seems to kind of work out. If you can create more free time for you to do the stuff that you really enjoy, that's definitely not work at all, then that balance really starts to feel like it's paying off. I hope that that's making sense. I apply that system to knife acquisitions as well. You guys have heard about my system, right? Again, I mean, obviously I'm kind of pushing this topic along and like really trying to force it into something that's relatable. But seriously, that's how all of my knife acquisition stuff works as well. I found that in the early days of getting it, and those of you who are brand new to the knife world and you're like, oh my gosh, I started watching Metal Complex and I started buying stuff and I was like, Ugh, and I felt ravenous, like having to acquire the new thing and it's becoming stressful, not just, you know, like wondering if I am, am I going to like this, but also I'm taking a hit on my bank account. Yeah, I remember that. I remember paying way too much money, you know, for my budget, right? Not versus the knives are worth. I was forking over so much money monthly to scratch that itch, right? I had no system. I was just like, if I found something and I wanted it, sometimes I would go ahead and pay for it even when it really didn't fit in my budget. And that created so much stress. So I had to change my system. Initially before the channel, it was, you know, don't buy a knife unless you, number one, can fit it into your budget. And ideally, number two, if you can sell something from your collection, right? Not everybody has a collection of knives that's worth a lot of money that they can sell to acquire what they want, right? And a lot of people look at it as, well, if I'm going to take a hit or a loss on something, then I'm definitely not going to do that. It's not cost efficient, right? Everybody's system is different. My system was not necessarily based on whether or not I was taking a loss or whether or not it was cost efficient. I was looking at, hey, these things, I've already bought them. They're already in my collection, right? Uh, what can I sell them for? And can I take that money and purchase something uh, either in full or in part that will bring me that new sense of satisfaction or scratch that itch? Can I do that, right? So that coupled with my budget to cover any excess costs on it, that's how I would measure that out. And that worked for me because I was enjoying the hobby. I was enjoying what I was doing. I was having happiness. It wasn't creating any additional stress on my personal life. And it wasn't creating any additional stress on my bank account, even though I was forking over more and more and more money and getting, right? The money that I was spending was the experience. That's what I was buying, right? I wasn't creating a massive collection or, you know, uh, um, compiling or whatever. I wasn't 
creating a massive collection of knives and increasing the value. No, that's not what I was doing. It wasn't like a, uh, I'm looking for an investment type of thing. I was paying for an experience to be a part of a community that I found that I really enjoyed, but I had to change the method to make it work for me. Um, and now it does. And now I got, I, I've said this a million times. Now that I have the channel, it works perfectly because if I want to buy something, right, I generally think, well, you know, is it, is this going to be entertaining content for the channel? Is it also something that I want, something that's going to bring me happiness? And can I afford it? Can I use channel funds to do that? Right. If all that makes sense, then yeah, then I go ahead and do that. Right. Um, but this way, this, you know, the channel is literally born out of maximizing that process. I've decided I want to make this a serious part of my life and I love it so much. I, I, I want to share it with people. That's a huge part of it. I want to talk about it. I want to continue to acquire new things. I want to put my hands on as much stuff as possible. The YouTube channel was a piece of that, right? So circling all the way back around, zooming way out and taking a look at the big picture, right? If you're wondering, how's he going to tie this together? I found a way in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's always been in the back. Obviously, it's in my subconscious, right? Creating this short, these short little videos and expanding to as large an audience as possible is absolutely a puzzle piece in all of that. That's my brain actively and subconsciously seeking out another way to make this more possible for me. Uh, any creator uh, who says that they're not interested in growing is full of crap. Um, we are all interested in growing. Um, you know, I, the channel has grown at an, at an incredible pace, this current channel, and I'm very thankful for that. But if I could snap my fingers and, you know, have a hundred thousand subscribers, uh, tomorrow, would I do it? Well, yeah, as long as it didn't have any major negative impact on the channel, as long as it, my process and the thing, the way that I like to do things doesn't change and I get to keep enjoying it. Absolutely. So periodically I will explore different avenues. I thought about, um, actually expanding to other platforms as well. But I won't do that if it takes away from what I do here. Like, this is what I like to do. I also like Instagram, right? If taking my time, dividing it up or, you know, sectioning out a certain percentage of it uh, and, and putting it into something else, if it starts to take away from another section that I really enjoy and the enjoyment that I'm getting from this new area does not create a positive, you know, payout, I guess, mentally, then I'll stop doing it. It's just like I'm kind of poking at different doors and things like that and seeing what else is out there, what's beneficial and what most importantly, what I enjoy, right? Because that's, I can tell the type of stuff that you like to enjoy. Wow. I somehow still managed to turn this into a 20 minute video. What are the knives? Um, sorry about that. This is the Guardian Tactical Recon Elite. Uh, we have the Spider Coast Spy Opera. I don't know that that's actually been unboxed yet. You guys will probably see that this next week. We have the Demco 8020.5, of course. We have this big, what is this gigantic fixed blade? This is the Hoback MP6, I believe. These are also available on DLT Trading. It is 3V. Expensive fixed blade, but holy cow, it's probably indestructible. We have the uh, Chavez TAK, or Tiny A-Word Knife. We have the uh, Microtech Scarab 2, new acquisition. The ZT0460 Ti Sinkovich. Uh, we, of course, have the uh, Hinder XM24 Full Titanium Harpoon Spanto. Wonderful. We have the um, Wayfair 247 with the Entropic Finish. Very cool. These are also available on DLT Trading in Plentiful Supply. And uh, the uh, Hoback Sumo, which um, I can tell you guys are very excited about because I get notifications when people decide to use my links on stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I don't think this needs to go on any further. Um, yeah, I hope that this was at least entertaining. I like to give insight into the channel. I like to let people know what, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I don't like things to be a mystery. I like things to be full transparency here. So for those of you who watched all the way to the end, I hope you feel... You know, I hope you feel like that's the case because it absolutely is. Please uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.